2 Samuel chapter 10 And it came to pass after this, that the king of the children of Ammon died, and Hanan his son reigned in his stead. Then said David, I will show kindness on Hanan the son of Nashon, as his father showed kindness unto me. So here are two friends, two kings, got along, they helped each other, and at death, David says, I'm going to send relief to the son. I'm going to comfort him. And David sent to comfort him by the hand of his servants for his father. And David's servants came into the land of the children of Ammon. And the princes of the children of Ammon said unto Hanan, their Lord, Thinkest, that's the first time Thinkest shows up. And that's going to cause... The death of 40,000 men, near 41,000 men. Thinkest thou that David does honor thy father? You think he's really here for that? You think he really cares? That he has comforters? First time that word shows up. The comforters are the servants of David that came. You think they're here for comfort? Has not David rather sent his servants unto thee to search the city and to spy it out? No, he didn't. And to overthrow it? No, he didn't. That's a lie. Wherefore Hanan, who listened to these guys, took David's servants and shaved off the one half of their beards. That's the first time beard shows up. Took half their face and shaved it. And cut off their garments in the middle, even to their buttocks, and sent them away. He half shaved them, and evidently they only had one, one set of clothes that were on their backs, and cut their garments. Their buttocks are showing. And he sends them off. Now the Jew with his beard, it's in the law. And there were precise ways for him to trim that beard. And many of the Jews that you see the pictures of them, they do have beards. Now they got half a beard. And when they told it unto David, he sent to meet them. So David's going. David is rising out of the palace, out of his throne. He's going to go meet these men. Because the men were greatly ashamed. They're walking around with a half a beard and they're walking around naked until they can get somewhere to get some clothes. And the king said, tarry at Jericho. That's a cursed city. That's the cursed city. Cursed be the man that builds this city. Until your beards be grown. And they return. I don't know how long it takes a Jew to grow his beard, but at least about a month. And once their beards came back, and when the children of Ammon saw that they stank before David, the children of Ammon sent and hired the Syrians. Oh, look at them. Here they come. Uh, Bethrop and the Syrians of Zobah, 20,000 footmen, and of King Maka, 1,000 men, and of Ishtab, 12,000 men. These men that said the princes of Ammon has now caused a battle. They have now cost the city of Ammon money to hire the Syrians. We need help. We need aid. Because these guys lie. A lie can cause much damage. And when David heard of it, he sent Joab, that's the military leader, and all the hosts of mighty men. And the children of Ammon came out and put the battle in array at the entering of the gate. And the Syrians of Zobah, and of Rehob, and Ishtab, and Maka were by themselves in the field. So the Syrians had their own camp. And when Joab saw that the front of the battle was against him, before and behind, the main mil military artillery, Joab is outnumbered. He's encircled. He chose all the choice men of Israel. And put them array against the Syrians. He chooses the elite of the elite. The seal class team. Of the Israelites. He calls the Delta Force men. Of the Jews. 
He gets the Marines of the children of Israel. And the rest of the people, those he has not chosen, he delivered into the hand of Abishai, his brother. The rejects of Joab, here, brother, take these guys. I have the elite of the elite of the elite, elite, elite. You get the rest. That he might put them in array against the children of Ammon. So Ammon is not as bad as the children of the Syrians. And he said, if the Syrians be too strong for me, then thou shalt help me. But if the children of Ammon be too strong for thee, then I will come and help thee. So here's the battle plan. We, we don't know what's going to happen, but you know what? We got to prepare. We I get the elite of the elite. You may need help. I need may need help. We're going to help each other. Be of good courage. And let us play the man for our people. You're afraid. You're upset. We may not do well. But for the people of Israel... Let's act like we're strong. Let's act like we can do it. And that word play, we'll look at that in a moment. And for the cities of our God, that don't mean play fooling around either. We'll see that in a moment. And the Lord do that which seemeth him good. That's kind of interesting. The man that murdered a military man and not in combat is relying on the war Lord in combat. Remember, Joab's a murderer. Abishai has been charged with the same murder of Abner that was not in battle. Well, let's play the man. Let's trust in God. And Joab drew nigh and the people that were with him unto the battle against the Syrians. And they fled before him. Man, they took off. We're out of here. Go on. See ya. And when the children of Ammon saw that the Syrians fled, then fled they also before Abishai, and they took off too, and entered into the city. So Joab returned from the children of Ammon and came to Jerusalem. Yeah, the military foes left, fled. And when the Syrians saw that they were smitten before Israel, they gathered themselves together. And Hadarezer sent and brought out the Syrians that were beyond the river, and they came to Helam and Shobach. The captain of the host of Adarezer went before them. And when it was told David, he gathered all Israel together and passed over to Jordan and came to Helam. And the Syrians set themselves array against David and fought with him. Here's a battle. We're in, we're in conflict now. And the Syrians fled before Israel. <laughs> they leave. They lose. And David slew the men of 7, 700 chariots. And the Syrians, 40,000 horsemen, and smote Shobak, the captain of their host, who died there. 47,000, uh, yeah, 40,700 40, 40, men were killed because these princes lied. A war over a lie. And yet many wars have been fought and people killed because of a lie. That's in the nature of man. And they'll be judged by God. When all the kings that were servants to Hadarezer saw that they were smitten before Israel, they made peace with it. Please give up. Come on, we'll be nice to you. And served them. So the Syrians feared to help the children of Haman anymore. Haman called, Syrians want to help me? No. Come on, we need you. No, 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 no. We ain't going to do that again. And it may be also the fact that not only did they lose to the Israelites, maybe they also found out, hey, you know, we fought that battle because your guys lied? We don't trust you. So over keeping this place, let us move over to 1 Corinthians 19. And 1 Corinthians 19 is really pretty much the same, but there's one place I want to read. i got to find it again. 1 Corinthians 19, uh, 1 Chronicles 19.13. And I want to match this with 2 Samuel 10, 12. You can read 1 Chronicles 19 yourself. It's pretty much all the same. But there's one difference here I want to stand out. 
First, Second Samuel 10, Second Samuel 10, 12. First Chronicles 19, I lost again. 13. B, well, let me highlight a second. No way it is every time. All right. Second Samuel says, be of good courage and let us play the men for our people. I'm going to find the word play. Because many churches think it's hoorah, have fun, slides. Second Chronicles, I mean, First Chronicles 19, 13. Be of good courage. Okay, we got that. Let us behave ourselves valiantly for our people. Wow, that is a broad definition of scripture with scripture for the word play. And when you see many kids play, they are not behaving themselves in the church house. I've seen them running around with superheroes. I've seen them running around knocking into old people. Breaking things. And then, oh, that's what children do. That's not what I did when I was a kid. If I broke something, if I misplaced something, my mother made me go apologize to that person and somehow make it right. Play in the Bible is to behave yourself valiantly. That's a, that's a broad definition. I wish the people I, I, I work with today, I wish they would get that definition. What Joab is saying, according to 2 Samuel and 1 Chronicles, you may be afraid, but you better be valiant. This ain't no time for shoot and die. This is no time to go swing on the swing set. We are in battle. We are in battle as Christians. It is not the time to play. It is the time to put your shoes on, put your armor on, and get out there and fight. And Satan won't be happy. Satan would love to have you play. And we got this vacation Bibles and all this other nonsense. We're not in battle. You're taking off the Christian armor, you put face paint on, Jezebel. You dress yourself up in things that you're not. I wanted to see that in this thing of the definition of play. It's sure not the definition that we think of. Now, yeah, children can play. And I believe it's Paul that says, listen, when I was a child, I did childish things. And I'm not quoting the verse, round about the verse. But he says, when I became a man, I became a man. I put that foolish stuff away. Churches have not done that. Christians have not done that. And this thought that was a great, great, great verse. 